Welcome back everyone to the Mori Garage. It's time to install our Cobb access port and get this thing tuned up. Stay tuned. <laughs> Here is an unboxing for you guys. When you open the case, you will have your access port underneath. This will be on top of that. You'll have your quick start guide, your USB cable, the mount for the access port, and a couple of stickers. In the accessories box, you're going to have your OBD2 port for the access port to connect to. And they will also give you an alcohol prep pad and a mount. The first thing we're going to do is locate our OBD2 port. It is right here. Just reach your hand up, pull this down, and there it is. Take the OBD2 cable that came with the access port and plug it in. I noticed that this cover will not close with the OBD2 cable plugged in. But if you look here, there's a clip on this side and there's a clip on the other side. And this is the wiring harness that you see pulling it. If you push both those sides in, this will actually just push out of there. You can run it up top, run your wire through this hole, and you can actually get this to close. Take the other end of the cable. Mine came with this little cap on the end. We'll just pop that off. We'll plug this in into the access port. When you plug it in, it will turn on automatically. This is the first screen that pops up. It just kind of tells you how to navigate your four buttons down here. So we're going to go ahead and hit continue. After you hit continue, this is the second screen that's going to pop up. Install the access port to your vehicle. No action. We'll just go ahead and select. After that, it wants you to make sure that your ignition is on. Mine is not yet, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is with my foot off of the clutch, we'll go ahead and hit our start button. It'll turn everything on. After we turn the ignition on, it's going to ask you to confirm, is this your vehicle? <laughs> it says 2016 ST on there. So we'll go ahead and hit continue. After you confirm your vehicle, it's going to pop up with this select map page. You can go ahead and choose one of these that's got an anti-theft mode, stage zero, which I'm assuming is a stock tune. It's got a stage one for 87 octane, 91, 93. A couple of stage twos for your 91 and 93, and a couple of stage threes, and then a valet mode. This car is technically a stage three because of the upgraded intercooler up front, the intake, and the downpipe and exhaust. But I am going to have to get a custom tune because of the upgraded turbo. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and upload this stage three just for informational purposes. And then I will get the turbo tuned later on. It's going to pop up with this warning that a battery charger is recommended. If you have one, go ahead and throw it on. I do have one, but I'm not going to go underneath there. I'm going to make sure everything's turned off. When I do continue uploading these maps, once I get it back from my tuner, I probably will do that. But for this time, I'm just going to go ahead and hit continue. After you hit continue, it's going to ask you, do you want to back up your factory data? I'm going to definitely go ahead and do this just in case I decide to pull everything off of this. I don't plan on it, but if it happens, it's nice to have. So we'll go ahead and hit continue on that. The next page that pops up is this. It's backing up the factory data. I will tell you this, I couldn't film it quick enough, but there was a little warning light that popped up there and over here, but it shut off and then this is still running. So everything looks like it's going good. So once this finishes uploading, I will get back. It just finished backing up the factory ECU data, and it is now flashing the ECU with the new Stage 3 map. While the new map was being flashed to the ECU, I did accidentally pull the cord out about a millimeter, and it did stop the process. The access port told me that what I did, and it said just go back into recovery mode, so I did, and it restarted. And so recovery was successful. So now that the new map is uploaded, I've got to turn the ignition off. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I turn the ignition off. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue. After the access port is done flashing the ECU, it's gonna bring you back to the home screen. Here you can customize your gauges. You can look at different parameters. You can check engine codes. You can look at new tunes. Uh, you can. This is where you're going to upload new maps if you decide to get a custom tune, which is what I'm going to do. But other than that, it's finished. The Cobb access port is installed in the vehicle. All right, guys, so I have a tuner. I'm going to be doing this as an e-tune. So the first email that I got, they are asking me for the vehicle year, make, and model, the vehicle mileage, 
They're going to want to know your Cobb Access port serial number and the type of fuel that you're going to be using. The other things that they're going to ask for is your modification list, and then they're going to ask you for a detailed description of what you plan on doing with the car, what your goals are with the car, uh, and all of that. I sent in all the information that they asked for in the first email, and this is the email that I got back. This is what they're going to want you to monitor while you're data logging. You will have to go in on your access port and program this yourself, and I will show you how to do that. They gave me a few things that they want me to monitor while I'm actually doing the data logging. And then down at the very bottom, this is going to be your base map, and I will show you how to upload that to your access port. The first thing you're going to need to do to upload your base map to your access port is go to the Cobb Tuning website. Here's the exact URL because you're going to need to download the access port manager. So right down here, if you scroll down, you have your options for which operating system you have. I have Windows, so I'm going to choose that one and download it. After you download and install Access Port Manager, it will ask you, do you want to create a desktop icon? I went ahead and did that. So here it is. So we're going to go ahead and open this up. This is what Access Port Manager will look like without the Access Port actually connected. So we're going to go ahead and connect it. To connect the Access Port to the computer, obviously the USB end is going to go into the computer itself. And the other end is actually going to go into the side of the Access Port whereas the OBD2 cable goes into the bottom. After you plug your access port into the computer, it will turn on automatically. When you come back over to your access port manager, it will have everything that's been uploaded to the access port. Some of the options you have are updates. That's going to be access port firmware, options, access port info, and this eject access port. So anytime you're going to disconnect your access port from your computer, go ahead and hit that first, and then you can unplug it. Here are all of the maps that are uploaded to the access port. You can see the stage one, stage two, stage three, off the shelf maps that Cobb actually provides. And then up here, the one that has my name, Jordan M, with the turbo behind it, that is actually my base map that the tuner sent me. And to get this on there, it's as simple as dragging and dropping. There it is, you just drag it over, drop it in, and it's there. I showed you the parameters that my tuner was asking for. I assume that whoever you're getting your e-tune done by will probably have or ask for the same parameters, maybe a few that are different. But how you configure that on your access port is on your home screen, when you turn the ignition of the car on, it's going to go straight here. You're going to click on gauges. It'll try to identify the vehicle or the ECU of the vehicle. And so here's the gauges that you can actually read in real time. So what you're going to do is scroll up once and scroll up one more time and it'll turn that little arrow green. So you're gonna to wanna to click on that. And that third option there, if I can get the glare out, is configure data logging. So you're gonna go ahead and click on that. And right here is where you will have all of your parameters that you can put in for your data logging. So any of the ones that you don't want because it will come from the factory with some of these pre-selected. So let's say that this is pre-selected right here. If it's already selected, all you have to do is click on the center button. It will deselect that. And then you'll just scroll through and find all of the parameters that your tuner is asking for and select those. When you're done, just hit your back button and you are ready to start data logging. I went out and did my first data logging. I didn't film it because I was a little nervous about everything because I'd put everything on and this was the first time driving the vehicle after I put everything on. So I did do that on my own and I sent it in to the tuner and he sent me back my first revision. So I'm gonna show you, you drag and drop it just like I showed you on the computer previously, but to upload it to the car, you're gonna plug your OBD2 port into the access port. There's your home screen already pulled up and you're gonna scroll down to your tune. You'll hit change map where it's already on there. It's gonna look for the files and so let's see here. Here is my, so the one that's up here up top that says EA Jordan M, that's going to be the revision. So right here where it says V1.01, so version 1 was the base tune, and then version 1.01 obviously is going to be the first revision. So we're going to go ahead and click that. It's going to say the battery charger is recommended. I'm not going to put it on there right now because I am going to be in a hurry because it's supposed to rain today and I want to get out here and do this data logging. So we'll hit continue. 
it takes a minute and then it will finally pop up and start flashing the ECU. So it's doing that right now. All right, so the new map is loaded on. So it's gonna tell you to turn the ignition off for at least 15 seconds before starting the vehicle. So we'll go ahead and reach over here and we will turn it off. We're gonna wait 15 seconds and then we'll start it back up. Got the car started. So the first thing that you're gonna do when you wanna start data logging is go to these gauges. I've already got mine programmed. All right guys, so this is the road I'm using. You can see it's a long straight away down there. So I'm gonna wait for no cars to be coming. I'm gonna put this thing in third gear. Once I'm in third gear, at about 2,500 RPM, you wanna go ahead and hit the center button because it takes a second to go ahead and start data logging. Once you see that it says it's already data logging, go ahead and punch it all the way to about 6,500 RPM and then let off the throttle. As soon as you let off the throttle, um, you can wait a little bit, it doesn't matter. Go ahead and hit that center button again and it'll stop your data log. So go ahead and pull out here. Shift into second. Then we'll shift into third. And then right at 2,500 RPMs, we're gonna go ahead and start our data log. Once it starts, go ahead and punch it. Hold it all the way to 6,500 RPMs, and then you can let off and stop your data log. After you run your data log, you'll connect your access port back up to your access port manager. And just like you drag and drop your map from the folder to access port manager, you'll drag your data log all the way to your folder, drop it in, and you just send it to your tuner. The tuning is complete. I just wanted to share this with you because these are all the fuel maps. I went through eight different revisions before we got it just right. These are all of the data logs that I ran. At the very beginning, I did have a couple of boost leaks, but we got them fixed, no big deal, and it ran great. What's up guys? So let me talk to you about the tuning process. First run, I went out, everything was fine. Second run, I went out and sent it into the tuner. He told me that I had a major boost leak. He was targeting, um, you know, high teens on my boost and I was only getting two pounds. He told me that it was probably a coupler that popped off. I realized the week before that I had put on one of the hose clamps backwards and I just didn't have time to mess with it. And so the night before I did the second data log, I went underneath the car and I, I turned the hose clamp around to where it was the right way. It's a very tight space. There's not a whole lot of room to work with. And I didn't want to have to take the charge pipe all the way back off, fit it back on there and then put it on. So I kind of had to, you know, jerk on the hose clamp a little bit and to get it off and get it the way that I wanted. Well, I guess in the process of doing that, the coupler came loose at the top where the coupler goes into or goes over the top of the intake manifold. That's where my boost leak was. So I fixed it, no big, no big deal. Went back out, did my third data log, sent it back into the tuner. He sends me an email back telling me that I have another leak. And I I didn't realize it because I didn't know what boost pressure he was targeting and I was getting 16 pounds of boost. He was targeting 20 and told me that I it was a very small leak and he just assumed that it was probably another coupler. But what it was is the coupler coming from the turbo into the hot side charge pipe. The charge pipe was just barely inside of the coupler. And what was happening is whenever that boost pressure built up to that 16, it finally forced that coupler open just barely enough to where everything else was blowing out. I actually did have to take the hot side charge pipe back off and readjust everything. No big deal, I figured it out. Everything else with the tuning process went completely smooth. So that's pretty much the tuning process that I went through. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I will catch you in the next one. Later.